Jesus throughout all his earthly ministry, we see him time and time again, and it was something that, that confused me for a while. When he would do something for somebody, when he would heal somebody or raise somebody from the dead, he would tell them, Now don't tell anybody that I did this. You're right, Jack. But they never listen. <laughs> I mean, when, when you've been healed of, of, oh. of some crippling disease or you've seen a loved one raised from the dead, you're of course going to tell somebody. But I think that was Jesus' way of... It wasn't that He was ashamed or that He didn't want God to be glorified. It was almost, I think, His way of buying time. Because Jesus, everywhere He went, we find that He drew a crowd. Everywhere He went, yeah. people came out to see Him and hear Him and be touched by Him. And I think He was cautious of creating too much of a, of a noise. He, he was worried that, that His uh, fame would grow too much and that His ministry on earth would be cut short because there were things that He needed to do. <coughs> So he kind of like, even though there were crowds, there were multitudes everywhere. We see Jesus uh, escaping into desert places. We see him getting out on the boats and going out onto the sea to get away from these big crowds so he could talk to them. But at the same time, he, he always kind of shied away from, from the publicity, you could say. But this morning's lesson, we see Jesus entering into Jerusalem in the days leading up to His crucifixion. And there's nothing uh, reserved about this. There's nothing... Right. Uh, he's not holding anything back. He's riding into Jerusalem as a king, yeah. as a Messiah. And we're going to talk about that. But I want to start this morning in Zechariah. Chapter 9, verse 9. Zechariah wrote, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the foal of an ass. This was 400 years, some 400 years before Jesus lived. Now let's read in Matthew chapter 21, verse 1. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage, unto the Mount of Olives, then sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied, and a colt with her. Loose them, and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, ye shall say, The Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, the king, thy king cometh unto thee, meek, and sitting upon an ass, and a colt the foal of an ass. Matthew there quoting Zechariah. Yeah. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt and put on them their clothes, and they sat him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and strawed them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was come into Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. This is a Jesus keeping with things that had been predicted hundreds and hundreds of years before his birth. Zechariah predicted that he would enter, the Messiah would enter into Jerusalem on an ass, upon a colt of an ass, a, a young mule, a young beast of burden. Ezekiel predicted that Jesus would enter through the eastern gate of the city. Ezekiel, you'll find that he said that the Messiah, when he came, would come through the eastern gate of Jerusalem. And you could say, well, Jesus probably had read these things, and he knew what was expected of him. So, of course, he did that. 
But there were things that Jesus couldn't control. Because the crowd started quoting David. That's right. The crowd said, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And in Psalm chapter 118, we see in, in verse 25, it says, Save now. That's what Hosanna means. Save now. I beseech thee, O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. They were quoting David's own words. This was a very, very, very public pronouncement of Jesus' status as Messiah. This is something that up until this point, You're we right, had right. people recognizing that He was the Messiah, that He was the one that God would send to deliver His people. But this is the first major announcement of Jesus' status as the, the Messiah, the King that had been promised for hundreds and hundreds of years. Amen. It was especially public, number one, because it happened in Jerusalem, which was the center of, of the Jewish government. It was the center of Jewish religious life at that time. But it also occurred around the time of the Passover, which was the largest feast of the year. So there were thousands of people who had come from near and far from the outer countries of Israel into Jerusalem to celebrate this most uh, reverent of, of holidays. So, as we, as we read about this multitude that cried, Hosanna to the Son of David, we can probably think that those were the people... See, Jesus, uh, talking about His earthly ministry, He didn't spend a whole lot of time in Jerusalem. He spent His time out in the backwaters. He spent His time with the people who didn't get a whole lot of attention. Yep. He spent His time right, with right. the country people and the poor people. Right. He didn't spend a lot of time in Jerusalem. So you can think that when these people who had likely heard Jesus preaching, when they had heard about the miracles that He had performed, they were in Jerusalem to mark the Passover, it was probably these people who were taking the coats off of their back and oh, laying it on the ground. <clears throat> Because even the colt that he rode on, yeah, yeah. they didn't think it was necessary that it have to touch the ground. If he's sitting on that colt, that colt's holy too. So Jesus, step right on that. Yeah. yeah. And the people that didn't have coats, they cut down palm branches. Yeah. And yeah. laid them in there. They didn't want him to have to touch the ground. Even the colt that he was riding oh, on respect didn't him. have to touch the ground. And we, th we know, I, th I think, we can guess that these were the people from the outer countries. Because it says when Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, who is this? The people in Jerusalem didn't know who He was. And that's when the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth, of Galilee. Although this was a, a triumphant... Um, entrance for Jesus. It's strange to think that in just a couple days he was received as this king. He was received with people shouting his praises. But just a couple days later, these same people that said Hosanna would be saying, crucify him. Crucify him. Right, they would request that Barabbas be brought forth out of prison instead of seeing Jesus given mercy. The same multitude like these same people like <coughs> Jesus would be beaten days later after this happened. Jesus would be scourged. Jesus would be forced, although He had been whipped and, and beaten within an inch of His life, be forced to carry this cross through the streets of Jerusalem where He had just a few days ridden triumphantly on the back of this, this ass. And he would go to Calvary and he would yield up his body on the cross and his, his body would be broken and his spirit would be broken. And you compare that with what we're reading in our text this morning. Words, right, Zach. But as I studied it this week, and as I looked at it this week, as I looked into to what this entrance into Jerusalem is telling us, it just seems something, it, just from what I know of Jesus, it seems like something he would do. Because let me tell you, what he was doing, this was a victory parade. 
That's yeah. what this was. The battle had yet to be fought. The, the, the war had yet to be won. He still had to go to the cross. He still had to endure that. But Jesus, in boldness, rode in on a donkey yeah. with a king's welcome, saying that I know what has yeah. to happen, but I'm yeah. still claiming the victory. We can have the yeah. victory parade now because I know yeah. everything that's required of me. Jesus said, I'm going to do it. Let me talk to you first about that gate that he entered into. I told you Ezekiel predicted that the Messiah would enter Jerusalem through the eastern gate. That gate is also known as the golden gate. It is also known as the gate that's called beautiful. Some people call it the gate of mercy. In Arabic, it means the gate of eternal life. But Pope John Paul II had a name for it that I like better than any of them. He called it the threshold of hope. <laughs> Amen. Yes. Let me talk to you about the garments and the palms. If you look in the second chapter of Kings, chapter 9, you don't have to go there, but it'd be good reading this week. When Jehu, Elisha, instructed the prophets to anoint Jehu as the king over Israel, when he was anointed and he was named king over Israel, the men that were with him laid their garments on the ground so that he didn't have to walk <coughs> on the ground. That was, a, that was an entrance fit for a king. That became a tradition. Palms. We see that the people were cutting down branches out of trees. We can assume that they were palm trees. That was a... A, a, a palm was a, a symbol of victory. When Israel would overcome an adversary in battle, when the, when the warriors would return home, they would be met with people waving palms. It was a symbol of of victory. And I told you about how in Psalm 118 this one other instance of the word Hosanna being used these people just began quoting Psalms. But let me tell you the thing that encouraged me the most about this was the mule. I had never thought about this mule. Uh, uh, Brother Lee Holiday was here a couple months ago, or maybe it hadn't been that long, talking about this mule. And the theme of his message was, the Lord wants what you have. Yeah. That mule, no doubt, and the colt was put there for Jesus' use. And all those disciples had to say was, the Master hath need of it. Mm -hmm. And it was given unto him. But reading this in our modern perspective, we see... Jesus riding on this mule. They have a bad reputation in yes. today's culture. Amen. Yeah. Uh, they have developed a reputation for being stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. Are, and if you are to call someone a name, a certain old uh, name for, for a donkey, that is a pretty big insult. Yeah. Yeah. But back in these days, Everybody had donkeys. Everybody had asses. Everybody had mules. It was a sign, if you had a lot of them, it was a sign of wealth. And they were good for the kind of terrain because although they weren't fast, they were steady. Oh. And they could traverse the most difficult terrain. Come on, this man. was desert terrain. They yeah. were steady. They could provide a good ride. They were the Cadillacs of their time. They could hit all those potholes and keep on going. We, we tend to think that Jesus appearing in Jerusalem on an ass was a sign of His meekness. But it wasn't. Because we can see throughout the Old Testament that kings rode on asses. Kings rode on donkeys. But there was a specific time when a king would ride on donkeys. Come on, son. As man began to domesticate animals for our use. We got sheep for wool and meat. We got donkeys and other beasts of burden to carry our loads. Come on, Jack. Horses also, as, as man domesticated the horse, it became clear that a horse could do some things that a donkey could not. 
A horse could move fast. A horse could navigate better. It could get you from point A to point B a lot quicker. And that's why we see horses are the ones that are tied to chariots. They're the ones that are used in war. Come on now. If you're in a war, you don't want to be on a donkey. Yeah. Because you're going to get shot. <laughs> because it does it might move, you know, smooth. But it's slow. That's why they used the horse. So we see the horse as an emblem of warfare. When a king rides into a city on a horse, oh, bless the Lord. he's taken the city by force. Yeah. You're right, the, uh, the ancient uh, historian Josephus wrote about when Alexander the Great, the great uh, Greek conqueror, when he rode into Jerusalem, he rode into Jerusalem on a horse. Because Alexander the Great was a king of war. He took countries and he took them with force. But kings, when wartime was over, they went to the donkey. A donkey was a sign of peace. A donkey said that I don't need a horse. A donkey said I don't need to move fast. I don't need to worry about my enemies because this is mine. <laughs> All is peace. There's no need for war. In 1 Kings, when David was dying, and he wanted to signal to the people that there would be a smooth transition from his kingship to his son Solomon. He commanded that his men put Solomon on David's own mule yeah. and ride him through the streets. Oh, listen. It was a show that Solomon on his father's mule, it was a show that Solomon had taken over the throne, but it was also a show that peace was remaining in the kingdom. On, Solomon man. could ride through the kingdom on a mule and all was at peace. Amen. So when Zechariah in verse in chapter 9, verse 10, God says He will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem and the battle bow shall be cut off. Talking about the Messiah, Zechariah predicted that he shall speak peace unto the heathen. If this Messiah was to bring peace, why would he roll into town in a battle tank? Right. If he was speaking peace, why would he show up on an instrument of war? No, the King of Peace showed up in his victory parade on a donkey, on a vehicle of peace. Because Jesus was saying, the battle is done. Amen. The war is won. Amen. All is peace. It was a bold statement because, as I said, He had not been to Calvary yet. Our salvation was not sealed. The veil in the temple that separated us from God had not yet been rent. But yet Jesus was claiming the victory. Amen. He didn't show up on a horse to take it by force. He showed up on a donkey because it was already his. Yes. Yes. That's blessed, Lord. <laughs> Zechariah said, Rejoice, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just and having salvation. He is lowly and riding upon an ass. Yes. Days later, the crowd that said Hosanna would say crucify. And to many, that victorious entrance that Jesus had, people thought this is what we've been waiting for. But days later, they saw Him crucified. Killed in the most gruesome manner imagined. Come on, Zach, you're right. He had His humanity stripped away from Him. Come on, son. Amen beaten till he was no doubt unrecognizable as a man. Stripped of his clothing. Was spit upon. He was humiliated. So these people that watched him riding like a king victorious into Jerusalem probably thought <coughs> that it was just folly. And it was just a show. But today we see it for what it was. <laughs> a victory for him. Yes. We have a unique opportunity as Christians. When you're 
not that I gamble, but let me let me let's talk about gambling for a second. You don't get to place your bet after the game is over. Everybody would win. You have to let's talk about Jeopardy then. They don't get to wager in final Jeopardy before they they have to wager before they know what the question is. If I know what the question is and I can't answer it, I'm not going to wager anything. You're right. Or if I know it, I'm throwing it all in there. You don't get to place your bet after you know the outcome. Except we do know the outcome. Yes. Our king has Very already simple. declared victory. Yes. It's already been won. Yes. The decision is very easy. You can't lose. There's no question of how this ends. The victory parade has already gone on. The war has already been won. The victor has already been decided. You're right, Jack. So all you have to do is like the crowd that met him at the eastern gate of Jerusalem is say, Hosanna. Save me now. You're right. And you're on the winning side. It's as easy as that. Amen. Amen.